Welcome to Charts Today, my name is David Linton and today's edition for Wednesday the 7th of June comes to you from London and we start by looking at currencies, then uh, stock markets, commodities and last of all some US tech stocks and I have my weekly chart, my 1% point figure, that's my long term chart at the top here, my medium term which is my daily and my uh, uh, half a percent point in figure and then my short term chart which is my 60 minute and my 0.1% 60 minute point and figure chart. So this is my long term, my medium term and my short term view and as I track through each stock I get, or each instrument, I get these all changing. So it allows me to get a very quick overview of what's going on. So the dollar index is just really testing this support level on the weekly chart on the cloud. We see here on the on the daily chart we're well below so this is bearish and on the 60 minute chart we're also bearish. We do have a downside target of 93 on the dollar index. That's still 3.7 percent away and we are seeing uh, upside potential here on the um, on the uh, long-term chart. So a very mixed picture for the dollar but is continuing to weaken in the short and medium term. And we're seeing the euro just trying to make this long-term transition above the trend and uh, the key here will be can we unwind some of these downside targets. Certainly this one will hang over us for a very long time as will this one but these if we move higher than these levels given that's about 116, 117 then we would deactivate these targets and short term we have reversed the trend we do have upside targets of 115 and 118 so in the short and medium term the euro is looking strong the dollar is looking weak against the Japanese yen the dollar has actually been falling quite significantly so this is yen strength uh, dollar weakness and we're seeing here that we've got downside target of 108 that's half a percent downside 10% downside on the um, point and figure chart which is not yet activated uh, and so we've got a very mixed picture but the yen is bullish below the cloud on all three time frames. Sterling, general election tomorrow so interesting to see how sterling will react to that. Uh, we are just in the doldrums and really now just waiting for um, the result on that before we can see any significant move in sterling. It may already be priced in. Uh, this is what happened in the uh, the referendum. Uh, sterling started to fall just ahead of the result um, and then the, the shock of the result. So very difficult to know uh, how to trade this but at the moment uh, sterling is looking bullish in the short and medium term but still bearish in the long term. Just watch for volatility in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. Looking at uh, Euro Sterling we're seeing that's pretty flat as well and against the Swiss franc we have been below the cloud and just entering bearish territory and we do have these two downside targets of 120.19 and 121.52 about 2.2 and 3.3% uh, downside respectively. Taking a look at uh, the sterling Australian dollar rate. Australian dollar has been strengthening significantly against most currencies overnight. Good uh, economic news out of Australia and we are just seeing um, a resurgence of the Australian dollar strength here. Uh, 168 and 169 the targets against sterling um, and against the US dollar it's looking pretty strong as well. Taking a look at the uh, S&P 500 index, uh, not much action yesterday. We still have this upside target of 4%. The uh, medium term upside target which is the stellar target is well and truly in place, 28% upside. Of course these targets of 6 and 11% are to be, be met first so that's where we would look to and a long term target of 14% with lots of support. So market's still looking pretty bullish. The Nasdaq uh, again not an amazing day yesterday but uh, still looking very bullish. The Dow just struggling really to just break this level significantly. That's about the 21 150 level just starting to get through that but uh, uh, we'll, we hopefully we'll see that move 21150 and the Russell 2000 similarly just struggling to break out of the upside but we are seeing that on the uh, S&P and the Nasdaq. Um, the S&P future is down just slightly this morning in London we're at point 0.09% down. The Nasdaq E-mini is up very slightly 0.02% so barely changed. So no real heads up as to which way the US markets will open today. The FTSE 100 index uh, looking better today um, although we're very slightly up um, and we're still holding this bullish position on all three time frames 
Uh, the 250 index, the mid caps, has had a less good week, and we are seeing a sell off in the mid caps after a really stellar run so far this year. Uh, DAX is uh, selling off uh, the last few days, and we are just seeing here we are still bullish above the cloud, but we are pulling back uh, significantly on the short term chart. And the Nikkei uh, has held its own given the strength of the yen. That's quite something. Normally the Nikkei falls on strong yen, uh, but we are looking bullish on all three time frames there as well. Hang Seng index down slightly, but bullish on all three time frames. Shanghai looking better short term, very strong day uh, overnight, up over 1%. And so we are just seeing this bottom now being confirmed, and we do have upside targets of 25 and 5.6%. So that's that's looking much, much better. The uh, Sensex index, the Indian market looking strong, and the Australian market with a stronger dollar is actually looking weak and going through a medium term transition. So Australian stocks generally looking less good um, as we uh, go through that transition. Looking to commodities, Brent crude uh, falling this morning. Uh, we're bearish below the cloud on the medium and short term. The long term is yet to transition. We are entering the the second half of the year when crude normally falls, WTI looking weaker as well, and uh, US nat gas back above $3 and maybe just making a transition on the short term chart. So uh, we're seeing an upside potential of $3.20, that's 4.5% upside. Keep an eye on your one minute charts if you're trading Henry Hub. Uh, taking a look at copper, not much change here, bearish on the medium and short term charts. Uh, if we look to some of the other commodities, co coffee falling again this morning to test new lows, looking bearish generally. Uh, and if we look at uh, sugar, that's recovering a bit, but still bearish on all three time frames. Uh, and if we go to gold, gold really jumped again yesterday, um, taking out this April high, or it's really finding resistance. Uh, we had the target of 1293. Uh, that was met. But the real story is these transitions in the trends. So we are seeing the new uptrends starting to take hold on the point and figure charts. And so that is significant, uh, these upside targets. If we move above this uh, 1360 level, that would actually deactivate this downside target and gold would then be running with the new highs. And June last year was a period when we did see strong performance in gold. So hopefully we're going to see the same again this year uh, for the gold bulls. But gold is looking better and better. Take a look at the one minute tar chart and point figure. You'll see targets uh, to 1300, 1319. Um, so it is looking uh, strong. Uh, sterling, uh, sorry, silver looking uh, pretty bullish as well. And then if we take a look at uh, US Treasury yields sitting at 2.15% just in the doldrums in the short and medium term. Uh, and uh, that expectation on interest rates uh, is is declining. Uh, if we look at uh, Apple, we see not much change yesterday, but still bullish on all three charts. Google, a little bit of a sell-off at the end of the day, but still looking very bullish. Amazon, much the same. Um, and Facebook, just selling off again yesterday, but these upside targets really looking very strong indeed with multiple upside targets. And Microsoft, um, having jumped, just flattened yesterday. But US tech still looking like a very strong um, bet for most tech stocks. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.